Yes, greetings friends. It is Geoffrey with another series called The Eternal Sun. The Eternal Sun. I am Geoffrey and I will be taking you through this study. Our theme text will be 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, which says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. That's what we will be studying more. Now, this is without controversy, what we are going to be studying together. Let's start with a prayer as we study. We start our part one of the eternal son. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this moment. We thank you because you love us so much. As we are going to study from your word, we ask you guide us and teach us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is part one of the eternal son. Now, we are trying to see the Trinity question. Now, two fundamental pillars of the anti-Trinitarian teaching is one, that the Holy Spirit is not a separate person of the Godhead, but is just a power or force. Therefore, there are only two, that's the Father and the Son. Now, we want to see what does Ellen G. White say about the, the Trinity. In the book of Evangelism, page 616, she writes and says, we need to realize that the Holy Spirit, who is as much a person as God is a person, is walking through these grounds. And she writes in Desire of Ages, page 671, that sin could be resisted and overcome only through the mighty agency of the third person of the Godhead, who would come with no modified energy, but in the fullness of divine power. So question, is Jesus as eternal as the Father? Did he have a beginning at some point in eternity in order to be the only begotten Son? Now, if you have not learned about the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the mystery of the Holy Spirit, you can ask for that episode or those episodes. There are only five of just 15 to 20 minutes. The mystery of the Spirit. But we saw that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is a person, is God. He is God himself and he is a person. And today we want to see, is Jesus as eternal as the Father? Did he have a beginning at some point in eternity in order to be the only begotten Son? Now, that's why we are studying the eternal son. Now, the anti-Trinitarians teach that Jesus had a beginning at some point in eternity past in order to be the son of God and that he was begotten and therefore is the son of God, not as eternal as the father who is the only true God. Now, let's and again remind ourselves, medical ministry, page 92. She writes and says that let no one venture to explain God. Human beings cannot explain themselves. And how then dare they venture to explain the omniscient one? Satan stands ready to give such ones false conceptions of God. So all those who want to try to understand or to explain who is the Holy Spirit and they want to make sides and that if they can, Satan stands there ready to give them false conceptions of God. It says, in regard of the personality, the prerogatives of God, where he is and what he is, this is a subject which we are not to dare to touch. On this theme, Silas is eloquent. So question, is Jesus Christ God? Is he fully God? The Bible tells us in John chapter 20, verse 28, and Thomas answered and said unto him, that is to Jesus, my Lord, and my God. So that shows you that Thomas saw Jesus as God. Matthew chapter 1 verse 23. The Bible, the Bible says that, Behold, a virgin shall be with a child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. So it is God himself be, came to be staying with us. The Steps to Christ, page 12, she writes and says, Jesus, the tender, pitying Savior, was God manifest 
in the flesh. That's and he goes first Timothy three verse sixteen. Now questions. The question is is Jesus as eternal as the Father? Did he have a beginning at some point in eternity in order to be the only begotten son? Now, the Bible tells us in John 17, verse 5, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I have with thee, I had with you before the world was. And John chapter 1, verse 1, up to 3, the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were created by Him, and without Him was not anything that was created, or that anything that anything made that was made. And now, in the Old Testament, we see the prophecies of the Messiah, that's in Micah chapter 5, verse 2. The Bible says, But thou Bethlehem, Ephrata, that there be little among thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. So Jesus is from old, from everlasting. He is the everlasting one. He's from old and from everlasting. The Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 and 6, that let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now, that Jesus was equal with God. So there's no, like, Jesus is a lesser God, and then God is a higher God. They are co-equal, co-eternal. They are equal. They are equal. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 1 and 3. The Bible says, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave the tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days, no end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest forever. So Jesus has no beginning of days. He has no end of life. So he's eternal. The Bible makes it very clear in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his soldier. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Wonderful Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So Jesus is called the everlasting Father. That's why the prophet writes in Evangelism, page 615, she says, Christ is the pre-existing, self-existing Son of God. In speaking of his pre-existence, Christ Christ carries the mind back through deathless ages. He assures that there was never a time when he was not in close fellowship with the eternal God. So questions. Is Jesus as eternal as the Father? Did he have beginning at some point in eternity in order to become the only begotten son? The answer is no. Now let's go back to um, the Old Testament and we see if indeed he has ever gotten the beginning. Now, we're going back to Moses' account when he was on Mount Horeb and he was meeting God himself. Now, the account is in Genesis, is in Exodus chapter 3, verses 1. We are going up to verse 6. Genesis, uh, Exodus chapter 3, verses 1. We are going up to verse 6. The Bible says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father in law. The priest of Median, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. So here Moses was taking care of sheep and he was on Mount Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn 
Now turn aside and see this great sign, why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw, now I want you to see, here we have the angel of the Lord in the bush, but here the next verse is, and when the Lord saw, so meaning that the angel of the Lord is the Lord himself. And when the Lord saw that, the, that he turned aside to see, God called out, uh, called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, here am I. And he said, draw not nigh hither, put off your shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am, now I want you to mark the word I am. He said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. He says, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. See, this is the great I am. That's um, Exodus 3 verse 6. Now, in Exodus 3 verse 13 to 16, Moses is explained too. And now Moses here, he asks now, if I go to the children of Israel and tell them who has sent me, what will I ask? Now, let's catch up the story in Exodus chapter 3 verse 13. The Bible says, and we are going up to 16. The Bible says, and Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and say, and they shall say, and, and I shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel that I am has sent me unto you. I am. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. That's Exodus chapter 3 verse 14. Now, Ben's commentary, that is the commentary on the Bible, says the word is press, absolute, and therefore unchanging and eternal being. This is from Adam Clark's. Clark's commentary says, It is difficult to put a meaning on the words. They seem in, intended to point out that uh, out the eternity and the self-existing of God. This is Wesley's commentary. It says, A name that speaks what he is in himself. I am that I am. This explains his, his name Jehovah and signifies first that he is self-existent. He has his being of himself and has no depending upon any other. A being self-existent. And he cannot but be self-sufficient. And therefore, that's Weasley's commentary. Therefore, all sufficient and the inexhaustible fountain of being and bliss, secondly, that he is eternal and unchanging or unchangeable, always the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will be what he will be and what he is. This is from Geneva's Bible notes. It says, the God who has always been, I am and shall be, the God Almighty, by whom all things have their being, and the God of mercy, mindful of my promise. This is from the Gill's commentary. These are just scholars. This, is, this signifies that the real being of God, his self-existence, and that he is the being of beings, as also it denotes his eternity and immutability and his constancy and faithfulness in fulfilling his promises. For it includes all time, past, present, and to come. Gil's commentary says, and the says is, not only I am what I'm present at, I am at present, but I am what I have been, and I am what I shall be, and I and shall be what I am. That's what he meant. I am what I am. This is from the Kill and Deal's commentary. It says, God designed, designated himself by this name as an, the absolute God of the fathers, acting with unfettered liberty and self-dependence. Exodus 3 verse 14 has said, and God said unto Moses, I am that 
I am. Now we want to see this word I am. Was it used by Jesus? Yes, friends. John chapter 8, verse 58 and 59. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, this is assuredly, I'm telling you, this is real. As verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Then took they up stones to cast out, to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. So meaning that the Jews themselves, they understood what Jesus was meaning when he was saying, I am that I am. They understood. They were like, who? Oh, how could you say like you are you are the one? You are the one who was spoken to, uh, spoken about in Exodus chapter 3. So Jesus claims to be the great I am. He is I am. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the resurrection. I am he that liveth and I was dead. I was dead, but now I live forever. He is the great I am. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. The desire of ages, page 469 and 470. She writes and says, silence fell upon the vast assembly. This is a commentary about John chapter 8, 58 and 59 by the prophet. Desire of ages, page 469, 470. She writes and says, silence fell upon the vast assembly. The name of God given to Moses to express the idea of the eternal presence had been claimed as his own by this Galilean, Galilean rabbi. He had announced himself to be the self-existence existent one. He who had been promised to Israel, whose going forth have been from of old, from the days of eternity. Now he is quoting, the prophet is quoting Micah 5 verse 2. Now Desire of Ages page 23 says, the burning bush in which Christ appeared to Moses, revealed God. You see? So, in Genesis, in Exodus 3, he says, I am the God. And here, the prophet comments and says, the burning bush, I'm reading this of page 23, in which Christ appeared to Moses, so it is Christ who appeared to Moses, revealed God. And the all-merciful God shrouded his glory in the most humble type that Moses could look upon it and Leave. Now, deserve a guess, page 513. Jesus declared, I am the resurrection and the life in Christ is life, original and borrowed and derived. He doesn't get his life from anyone. He that has the Son has life. The divinity of Christ is the believer's assurance of eternal life. So if you say Christ was sometimes begotten or some somewhere, then there you are mistaken because this divinity is our only hope of assurance of eternal life. If we would think of having eternal life, then his divinity is our assurance of eternal life. Friends, you have to choose who you will Put on the top. The divinity of Christ is very important to you if you want salvation anyway, if you need um, eternal life. Because he says, I am the resurrection. I'm life. In him was life and borrowed and, and derived. Is the all, all life. He has all life. He's the Alpha and Omega. So you need to accept him as God in your life. And he should rule as your Lord. May God bless you as you make that choice. We can pray as we finish our part one. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this moment. We thank you because you love us so much. As we have learned that Christ is, is from eternity past. He has no beginning and no ending. He's an eternal God. We ask you help us to accept him in our hearts so that he can transform us. Bless us today. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.